Hi, my name is Keith Jackson, and you're watching Shout. Good morning, my name is Keith Jackson. This is Shout. Shout deals with men tearing down walls. From the Joshua 6.16, the Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho, and on the seventh, on the seventh day, God commanded them to march seven times. And then he commanded them to shout for the Lord had given them the city. We're desiring to take back our city through men tearing down walls. This morning, we have a, a wonderful guest, a person that I think so much of a uh, brother in Christ, a brother that has a heart for the Lord that you would not believe. And uh, I just want you to get to know him. Uh, Pastor Joe Mason. All right. How you doing, Joe? Pretty good. All right. We're going to uh, delve into a little bit of uh, his uh, life and the, and the things that he has gone through, the walls that had to come down in his life for Christ to come in to be the man that God was calling him to be. Joe, you, I know a little bit of your testimony, man, and I want you to share with the public, you know, some of the, uh, the things that you had to do to uh, when God was calling you, those walls that had to come down, the shouting that was going on within you. Mm -hmm that had to come down for God to come in, for Christ to come in and transform your life. Amen. Well, first of all, I want to say thanks for having me on the show. No problem, bro. Um, my my uh, shout began at an early age, um, lived, uh, had one parent in the home. Uh, my father was active in the house, uh, uh, in my life. He wasn't in the home, but he was active in my life. Um, grew up, um, uh, never went to church, only on Easter Sunday, and that wasn't every Easter Sunday. Mm. Um, had a lot of uh, drinking and uh, drugging going on in the home. Okay. Uh, a lot of violence, um, domestic violence going on. Um, so so it's just a variety of things um, uh, that went on in my life uh, where my shout was coming from within. Uh, but one of the main things that happened to me or, or continue to happen to me even at an early age it uh, was sexual immorality okay. uh, my brothers uh, they were um, exposing me to pornography exposing me they were uh, having sex with women and uh, would let me uh, uh, see it and everything like that mm -hmm. so that 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 really took a toll on my life okay. and as I grew up I began to indulge in sexual immorality and a lot of uh, different acts with different women. And um, um, I can recall um, when the Lord came to me, um, as a matter of fact, I was with an ex-girlfriend of mine. I had a girlfriend at the time, she was out of town, but I went and picked up an ex-girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we hung out and did a little drinking and things like that. And then later on that night, uh, some things transpired and uh, once I took her back to uh, her home, okay. I came home and I uh, ended up falling asleep. And I remember I was lying there, I had a nine millimeter uh, on the right side of my pillow. Um, and I heard a voice after I had, uh, you know, dozed off for a little while. And I heard a voice uh, say, get up. And I thought someone was actually in the home. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I grabbed my nine millimeter, ran around, kind of checked the home and everything, and uh, didn't see anybody. And I knew I was there by myself. So went back to lie down again, I dozed off again, and the voice told me, uh, if you don't change your life, you're gonna die. Wow. So now I'm real scared. So got up with the nine millimeter again, ran down in the basement, uh, quoted some words, I quoted these words to be exact. I said, if I catch you in here, I'm gonna put a hot one in you. Mm. And I uh, searched all around home, nothing there again. Okay. So now I'm, 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 I'm leery, I'm leery. I've been drinking already, but I'm leery. So I lie back down once again, and it said it again. Wow. And I got up, and I knew it was the Lord. Now let me rewind a little bit. About two weeks before that, I kept having these dreams that I was gonna die. And I, I kept having the same exact dream that I was at a Elmco gas station and the guy just walks up behind me, shoots me in the back of my head. So 
I knew in a sense that I was getting ready to die. I, I don't know how I knew, but I knew through the dreams, but I knew I was gonna die. And uh, the fast forward it again, back to that uh, night that the Lord spoke to me. I got up, I started to iron clothes, and I went to a church, and a uh, guy was preaching, uh, uh, Pastor Gridiron, a guy named Pastor Gridiron. And uh, I was sitting all the way in the back of the church, and before he gave the altar call, I started to walk up toward the front. And uh, I remember him coming down out the pulpit. He wasn't even finished preaching yet. Mm -hmm. I remember him coming down from the pulpit, and he looked at my face. He said, son, you're tired, ain't you? I said, yes, sir. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I knew he meant not from uh, having any sleep or anything right. like that, but I knew he meant with the lifestyle that I was living. Right. And at that moment, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And a little bit later on, as I began to, uh, I, you know, you once you get saved, you got a bunch of zeal. You want to read all the time. You mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. study all the time and pray. But once I start to read the Bible, I just instantly, man, I just I instantly start fasting. Nobody told me how. I just read it in the scriptures and uh, praying a lot and seeking God and I think about a month later, mm -hmm. we were in another service. I had joined the church. We were at a Friday night service. It was a Kojic, so uh, uh, they have Friday night service. But anyway, we was in a Friday night service, and I told the Lord, the zeal that I had, I told the Lord, I said, I'm not going to leave this place until you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Wow, wow. I told him I'm going to stay here. I told the pastor, all them, y'all could go home, do whatever you're going to do, but I have to be filled. Okay. And God filled me that night and, uh, uh, you know, with the evidence of speaking in tongues and mm -hmm, things like mm -hmm. that. And just from that point forward, uh, God just began to bless me and uh, sent me back out to do uh, uh, um, outreach ministry because mm -hmm. that's where I came from, off the streets. And, and, and just from that point, man, it's, 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 it's been uh it's been great. Good. I want to I want to touch on something else, and because you have two sides that men that you've shared with me, you've talked about the sexual immorality and different things like that. But there's another side that you share with me about the street life. You talked about the nine millimeter. For you to be running around with a nine millimeter, sleeping with it, what kind of lifestyle were you living then that you had to have a nine millimeter with you? Well, it it it, it was. Um I was also living, uh, selling drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, wasn't really gang violence, but you know we call it a clique back then. Mm -hmm. uh, 35th and Prospect, and you know uh, all of us young guys, we had uh, weapons then, and um, uh, just a real rough life. Gambler, a hustler, mm -hmm. um, in the sense of hey man, I would do whatever I need to do to make money. Now that not for us, just hurting people, but I did do that also, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but that was the other side to it. Right. Um, um, living that fast life in uh -huh. a fast lane, you know, a lot of liquor, a lot of women, a lot of guns. I never did uh, smoke or take any drugs. Okay. My, my, um, uh, I was a drinker. You okay. Know? And I was an social drinker. I did. I had a model. I just say I drink to get drunk. Ain't no need to drink if you ain't gonna get drunk. So mm. uh, that was my motto. So. Yeah. Uh, that's the life I live. Hung with a lot of guys that thought the same way. Mm -hmm. Come from broken homes, no fathers in them. So you know, and that was really hard. You really didn't have a lot of role models in the right. ones we did from school teachers and coaches. We didn't listen to that, you right, know, right. because we seen these other guys older than us. They're making all this money, selling all these drugs, all these fancy cars. Mm -hmm. So that's what we desired because that okay. was the environment that we grew up in. Right. And see, this is what I'm talking about with shout tearing down walls. We've got a man here that went through a lot of craziness in his life with the sexual morality, the drugs, the drinking, and things of that nature. But then when the Spirit of the Lord gets a hold of you, but not only did it get a hold of you, he, he wanted it. He Amen. wanted God Amen. to just take a hold of him, fill him with his spirit, that he would be able to live a life that would be pleasing to his Lord and Savior. Joe, talk about what your ministry now, what God is doing, because you, you know, just knowing you and working with you and working under you at the City Union Mission, mm -hmm. 
I'm amazed at what I have seen over the time that you've allowed me to, to, to work with you and how God has just blessed you and uh, anointed you to preach the word. I mean, this is what I'm talking about, you know, Amen. to be transformed by the spirit of the living God. Talk a Amen. little bit about that. Well, first of all, I want to tell the listeners out there uh, and, 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 and some of the younger uh, men that are Christians, first of all, I want to tell them this is a process. Yes. This, this, this is not an overnight thing. This is a process. You have to grow. Sanctification is a process. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so, so this happened over time. Okay. You know, sometimes people see a gift that God has given an individual, mm -hmm. and they desire that gift, but they don't know what they had to go through to get the gift. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, but by any means, to answer your question, um, for the last 17, 16 to 17 years, when I joined the Sheffield Family Life Center, um, I worked as a um, um, one of the leaders and directors on the uh, Soldiers of the Cross, and what that is, that's an outreach ministry where we go to the streets of Kansas City every Friday, right. and we minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pass out tracts. Sometimes we feed them. Sometimes we, you know, we do haircuts in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a variety of things that we do to get the message mm -hmm. of the gospel out. Uh, the other side of that, of course, you know, you're in men, men's ministry with me, so we try to uh, reach the men that are in the church that we are at yes. already and uh, help them come along and uh, uh, walk in their gifts and their anointings and, you know, kind of equip them to go out yeah. and uh, do what God has called them to do. Mm -hmm. Now, for us, the preaching and pastoring side of it, uh, for the last couple of years, God has been dealing with me as a starting uh, my own church. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's been a struggle. I've, I've, I, I had some uh, great men in my life, uh, Pastor Ray Baby and one of them, um, uh, Bishop Freeman, and, and just different men in my life that have been teachers and mentors to me. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Greg Miller uh, have, have taken me under their wing and right, uh, right. Uh, show me what it is, some of the things that I'll be facing with uh, for pastoring. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is something new to me. Uh, it's kind of scary stepping out on faith like that. You know, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're, you're responsible for uh, to be the overseer of people's souls and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, God has really blessed right. and put me under good men that are sound uh, in the faith. So right, right. Uh, I thank God for that. I thank those men for taking that time out of their schedule and their lives mm -hmm. and their families and, and, you know, pouring into me. So yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's where I'm at currently. One of the things that, uh, that amazes me about Joe, and this should be with any Christian, you know, is that he does not play with the Word of God. He does not Amen. play with it. I mean, when it's to, to be preached or whatever God gives him, he comes strong with it. Amen. He comes strong with it, and I appreciate that about him. There is no compromise. And um, being under him, you know, for several years now, uh, and his tutelage, and uh, like he said, Pastor Ray Mabian, that's over the both of us, you know, we appreciate that. But uh, I've been able to stand and uh, sit in Joe's place at different times, and he's entrusted that to me. But I follow his lead in, in those types of things. But Joe, uh, you, you talked about your church, you know, your uh, God's calling you out. Um, where is your church, and wh when are the services? How, when, how soon are you going to be doing things? Well, uh, of course, it's a new church plan. It is uh, called a Sacred Assembly Church. Mm -hmm. uh, it's located at uh, 8715 East 26th Street. Okay. That is in Kansas City, Missouri, 64129, I believe. That's that's the zip code. Okay. Um, uh, I believe the email address is sacredassembly1, that is the number one, okay. at yahoo.com. Okay. Uh, but um, here, a couple of months ago, I think about six weeks ago, my wife and I purchased the building there. Mm -hmm. um, God has spoke very clearly to us. I was struggling with it, to be honest with you. Okay. Now, I had been struggling with it for the last two years. Like I said, God had been speaking some things, but he made it very, very clear here okay. in the last three or four months. And there have been some uh, people uh, come up to me, never seen me, don't know me, you know, told me, hey, man, you're going to get a church. You're a pastor. And and, and matter of fact, uh, I was in a service here uh, about uh, four four to five weeks ago. And uh, Pastor uh, maybe and the, the father, not the son, mm -hmm. uh, he spoke in a service mm -hmm. and told told me, called me up to the front, in yes. front of everybody. I remember that. And, yeah. 
Yeah, matter of fact, I think you were right standing right beside me. Mm -hmm. And he told me that God is going to give you a church. Yes. And you're on the ninth month, but you're not in the conception stage at the moment. Praise God. So all of these things were, you know, uh, um, uh, in the mix. And all of these things were uh, spoken prophetically by, by God through men and other folks that never knew, never told uh, 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 the apostle maybe and nothing like that so the spirit of the lord just been moving uh tisha and i we are very excited about this move yeah, but like yeah. i said it's it's a little scary for me yeah uh because it's new territory for me uh and i i just know that when god calls god will equip so amen well this and, is and, uh, and one more thing before uh, i'm sorry to cut you off and one more thing we'll be looking to open the doors of the church uh probably about the middle of July. Okay. We'll do an installation service. Okay. About the middle of July. We're not really clear with the date yet, but somewhere right. around that time. Right. And you all, you'll find out more about what Joe's, uh, Pastor Joe is doing in his ministry because he's going to be a regular guest, you know, someone that uh, I'm looking to have regularly because he and I do uh, ministry together and just things that we just like to, as we say, vibe about, you know, mm -hmm. about conversations, different areas of ministry and things like that. But I want you all to stay tuned. Uh, Pastor Ray Mabian is going to come on and we're going to kind of talk a little bit about what Pastor Mabian has gone through and the shout wall that had to come down in his life. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Shout. Uh, I'm here again, Keith Jackson, host of Shout. Uh, we're about tearing down walls, and uh, we just had uh, Pastor Joe Mason on, and he was sharing a little bit about w the wall that had to come down in his life for Christ to come in to transform his life, to be the man that God is calling him to be. I'm here with Pastor Ray Mabian. How you doing, Pastor? Hey, what's up, We're Pete? back here. How we're you back doing, again. Doc? That's how we do it. All right. All right. Steady as we go. Steady as we go. Pastor. Mm hmm we both know Joe personally mm -hmm. and we know some of his testimony, but some of the things that he has had to overcome mm -hmm. for God to come into his life, to transform his mm -hmm. life. That's not easy stuff. No, it's not. Yeah. It's true. You know what, what, what pastor Joe was mentioning was the sanctification piece mm -hmm. that had to come into his life to transform him from all that he had been through. Yes. When he talked about the pornography, the whole process of getting drunk. See, the beauty of that is, you have a testimony of where God brought you out of. Right. Somebody's listening to that right now that's struggling with that today. Exactly. That's going through that pain, that's going through that suffering, that's chasing women, that's running the streets, that, that can look at and say, man, well, if he can come out, yeah. I can come out. Amen. And that's what our testimony is. It's, it's that thing that, you know, so many people, uh, I think Christianity has been given a bad name it's because true. so many Christians have uh, had this uh persona or, or whatever, like they're, they, they've never gone through anything exactly. like that. When they became Christians, that everything just uh, just lined up. Right. And that's not the case. Like Pastor Joe said, there's a process. It's true. You know, but our testimony is that thing that uh, some uh, people want to look at you, point mm -hmm. your finger, I remember when. Yeah, you remember when, but look at me now. Right. Look at my life now since Christ has came into my heart and transformed my mind, my mm -hmm. body, my, everything about me is different because I'm walking with him now. Yes, sir. I think the key thing is being able to admit where you came out of. Yes. A lot of the times Christians don't want to do that because we even in the body have judged each other. Yes. And so in that process of us being able to function and do what we're supposed to do, then God is able to bless us in a mighty way. That's our testimony that changes lives. That's our testimony that gives us something to teach and something to preach that transforms us. Amen. Amen. And um, uh, I, I just love the fact that, um, you know, God can use anyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, lives that are so messed up, so jacked yeah. up, you know, as I say, you know, on my website, you know, I'm right. just in the description of, of, you know, I always ask that question, you know, if you had a Cadillac mm -hmm. or a Mercedes, would mm -hmm. you take it to, say, a Volkswagen dealer? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Impossible. Right. Because they don't know the product. But we continue to look to men that are just as messed up as we are and asking them what a man is. 
Well, you got to go to the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. You got to go to the one that that uh, that created man. Mm -hmm. And we have a purpose, but all of our purposes are different. Mm -hmm. But we got to seek the one that brought us forth. Yes, sir. And say, Lord, what'd you create me for? There. What'd you make me for? You know, mm -hmm. shout has been something that's been on my heart for you know how long since uh, the early uh, 2000, mm -hmm. you know, and my wife and I have just, you know, we, we it's just burns inside of us. And we know this is what God has given us. And this is what uh, he has called me to do. This is my pulpit, so to speak. You know, exactly. I flow better here, you know, sometimes than I do in the pulpit because I'm, that's where God has called me to be. I wasn't comfortable here in the beginning, but at the same time, you know, this is where God wants me. You know, so we got to seek God for the purpose. Joe knows his purpose. Like you said, it's not it's not so easy sometimes, you know, it's, and, and he said right. it's a little bit scary and it is scary. But when you know that God is with you, mm -hmm. you can do all things through Christ. Exactly. Yeah. I think uh, that key point of understanding that everybody has a different process yes. of getting to the place that they need to be in Christ. The beauty is God loves us enough that he deals with us right where we are. Right where we are. In whatever situation or mess that we're in, however good or however bad, mm -hmm. God is able to flow and deal with us. And he loves us enough that he knows we're different. Yes. But it's the beauty of where you go and mm -hmm. you have a plan to go somewhere in your life. Uh, and uh, praise God for, for Pastor Joe moving to the place of hearing the calling yes. and heeding the voice of God, mm -hmm. taking that step of faith and going and being able to start the work that God has called him to start. Amen. That's, that's huge. That's Amen. dynamic. I love that. You, know, you, you talked about, you know, God, he, he takes us right where we are, mm -hmm. right where we are. And, and I think people have misquoted that scripture a lot of times. God said, come as you are, come as you are. And they're thinking about fashion, mm -hmm. you know, the clothing or whatever. No. He meets you right where you are. Whatever junk is in your life, whatever, however you've messed up, whatever you've done that have you sinned against him, yes, but he's still standing there with open, open arms, ready to receive you as you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when he meets you, you change. Yes. There's the point. Yes. You know, when God steps in, mm -hmm. then all of your old process, you know, God gives us, praise God for his grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. He gives us a period of time to function but uh, even in the story that we heard from Pastor Joe, there comes a point where you start hearing clearly. Mm -hmm. God has different ways of speaking. So he can come with an audible voice. He can come in the word of God. Mm -hmm. He'll come through a song. He'll come through another person. Amen. But he'll let you know, my son and my daughter, it's time for you to start going to another level yes. in your life now. Yeah. It's and time if, and if you don't answer, if you don't heed that call, your life ain't going to be the same. You think you're going down this path mm -hmm. that you're going down. No, your life will never be right until you answer that call. That's right. You know, I, I, I know Joe and some of the things that he, you know, like he shared with us and stuff, he had to answer the call. Yes, sir. I mean, and I see what God did in his life when he answered the call. Exactly. So, and I can't imagine what is to come, mm -hmm. what is to come exactly. in this man's life, you know, uh, because he answered the call. That's There's it. nothing but blessings, you know, just like the Israelites. God told them in the beginning from from day one. These are the blessings when you follow me. But if you don't, <laughs> what's going to happen? There's curses. Right. But he answered the call and I praise God for him answering the call. I praise God for him and uh, Brother Dave Richardson seeing something in me that they said, come along with us. That's right. You know, I mean, I stepped away for a minute on some stupid idea that I had. And uh, my wife said, well, can you go back there? I said, I don't know. I said, we just have to pray about it. But then I got a call from them mm -hmm. and they's like, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, come on back. You know, and exactly. I was like, well, that's it. And I ain't stepped away since. That's right. You know, Keith, see, it's things like street ministry. Yeah. That there's not a lot of glamour glamorization. When you talk about going to the City Union Mission where yeah. everything don't smell all that good. Oh, right, right. And you're dealing with hurting people mm -hmm. who have real issues. Right. Who have brokenness mm -hmm. on all kind of levels. Yes. It's nothing but God's grace that keeps us and that we're able to make it thus far. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about ministering to somebody in their brokenness, right. in their most uh, uncomfortable place, yes, when yes. they have no hope, yes. when everybody else is counting them out and pushed them to the yes. side mm -hmm. and, 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 and feel like they're not worthy, mm -hmm. that's God's blessing and grace and mercy. Yes. And see, somebody need to hear this yes, right now. Yes. As ugly and horrible as you think you feel, mm -hmm. as unworthy yes. as you think you are, hey, the blood of Jesus yes. will wipe your slate clean. Yes. And all you got to do is say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. In this broken state, mm -hmm. in this ugly state, tired, tired. of this mess. Tired of this mess. I'm ready yeah. to live a new life. Yeah. Family, that's all it takes. Yeah. But like he's saying, tired, tired, 
You know, like the, the, the pastor saw Brother Joe coming down the aisle. He <coughs> says, son, you're tired, aren't you? But you know what? Sometimes we got to get tired, so tired that you're sick and tired of being tired. There you go. I had a pastor ask the question uh, uh, to the congregation. You know, he heard someone say they're tired of this, tired of that. He said, have you done anything about it? Mm. And he said, well, well, no. He said, well, you ain't tired enough. You ain't tired enough. You ain't sick and tired enough because you ain't done nothing about it. You ain't done nothing about it. But, That's it. Oh, praise God. Pastor Ray, I, I got to a point in my life where uh, I was waiting for my, my, you've heard me talk about this before, I was waiting for my cousin and one a good friend of mine come and pick me up mm -hmm. for the club one night, I you remember. know, ladies night out, Wednesday yes, night, and then I'm sitting there waiting for them. My car wasn't working, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm sitting there and then I, I'm flipping through the channels and the last thing I want to see is some televangelist. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there watching it, but I couldn't turn away from it. And he says, I believe it was Pat Robertson or someone, you know, and he says, if you need some, if you need something right now, come to the screen, put your hand on it. Mm. I put, I did, I crawled across the, my, my mm -hmm. apartment and I put my hand on the screen. Yes, sir. And I began to pray the prayer that he was praying. Yes, sir. And then after I got up, I walked back over and sat on my sofa mm -hmm. and my cousin called and he says, yeah. Hey, man, we almost there. And I said, man, don't worry about it. And he said, what's wrong? I said, man, ain't nothing wrong, man, but it's got to be more to life than this. Yeah. And from that point on, God came in yeah. and began to move in my life in ways that I could have never imagined. Yes, sir. I could have never imagined. That's your God moment. Yes. And praise God for those moments where he gets our attention. Yes. Where he stops us in our tracks. When yeah. we have a direction that we're trying to go, and trying to exclude him and mm -hmm. do our own thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, God says, you know, my son, I'm ready for you to go to another level. I'm ready for you to see uh, this this process. You know, what, what people know deep down, Keith, is yes. really when I'm supposed to do something, I know it's something God's called me to do. Yes. When I know that he's calling me and that, and that this process of living, how I've been living, is not how God wants. There's more that he has, and he'll show you, and I know, when I always would watch Benny Hinn on, mm -hmm. on TV, I just start crying. Yeah. Because of the healing ministry. And I know the, the flow of the healing and the prophetic that he called me to. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was supposed to fly. I didn't know how, I didn't know when, but I realized, you know what, Lord? I got a flow in that process. It's not in the perfection of man, it's in the calling that God shows you. Yes, yes. And the reality of understanding and knowing I've got to go to that next level of submission. And that's submitting myself to prayer, yeah. submitting myself to read this word, study to show yourself approved unto the Lord, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing yes. and understanding and learning this word of truth. So then you become yeah. the person of God. Well, you can't do it on your own. No, no. Now you can go to church, praise God for it. But if you just try to go Sunday to Sunday, that ain't enough. No, it's you not. You gotta study that word. Yes, exactly, exactly. That has been put before yeah. you. Yep. So you can be transformed in your heart and yeah. in your life. Yeah, you got to eat to live. You do, Doc. You got to eat to live. There ain't no need in starving. Mm -hmm. So if you got to physically eat to live, then you get to live in this life, you got to spiritually, spiritually be fed. There you yeah. go. We just want to thank you once again for, uh, you know, being part of Shout this, t t today. And uh, weeks to come, we've got so much more that we want to share with you guys. You know, people that are going to be coming on, on Shout that have testimonies that will... Uh, hopefully touch your heart and see the need for Christ in your life. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll be uh, back weekly, you know, on a regular basis, just bringing more and more to you. So just remember to shout and get it all out.